Thanks for joining us at VC2, where we are real people meeting real needs with the reality of Christ. If you have a testimony or any questions, we'd love to hear from you. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter as VC2 Online. You can also find out more about us, notes from each message, and a way to give at live.vc2online.com. And finally, we'd love for you to stay up to date with what's going on here at VC2 by downloading the VC2 app. You can find it wherever you get your apps from. Today, we're in our fifth and final week of our series on Proverbs. Throughout this month, we've been doing a chapter per day study of the book of Proverbs, and each message in this series has corresponded to the chapter for that day. Over the last four weeks, we've heard from Pastor Chad Waller, as well as Elizabeth Wolf and Tori Palmer. And in this final message, we'll hear from our executive pastor, Stephen Parsley, as he discusses Proverbs 30. Now, here's week five of our series, Proverbs. Good morning. It's good to be back. I've been back now for about a week. Thank you guys so much for giving me the opportunity to be able to travel and and be in Brazil for the last six weeks. And uh, everybody was able to jump in and, and work as a team and kind of do what I do and gave me a break. And to be able to be with my family there in Brazil and to be able to have my kids and, and wife be able to be there with her family. And uh, thank you guys very much. It's good to be home, though. It's very good to be home. <laughs> You excuse me, I still have a little cold from the travels. It was, it was kind of, it was winter there in Brazil, so I did catch a little cold right before I left, and then that plane trip did not help at all. So I'm still kind of, so if, if I cough every once in a while, please forgive me, excuse me. Um, my name is Steven, and um, I am on staff here at VC2. Um, I am what you would called an associate pastor. Most of you know as an associate pastor. Um, my official title is the executive pastor here at, um, I, was, I was about to say my church in Brazil. <laughs> but I'm here at VC2. What a wonderful church. Um, this morning, as we, as we have been continuing, we're going to continue in our, our, our reading of Proverbs. Uh, this has been just a wonderful month of every day with, has been along. We've read a chapter of, of Proverbs along with every day of the month. And um, today is July 30th. And I have been reading this chapter now for a couple weeks. And because I was like, how in the world? And they did this to me when I was, when I was gone. I had no say in what chapter or what Sunday I was able to speak. But... Um, so they stuck me with 30. I was reading it for a couple of weeks. I'm like, Lord, I have, I have no idea what I'm going to speak on in this chapter. And um, finally this week I had a breakthrough. I sat down with <laughs> Pastor Chad and we kind of talked through it and worked through it. He kind of helped me out. And we uh, thank you, Jesus, for Pastor Chad. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yes. Pastors Chad and Melinda are at a RISE conference, the RISE conference in Michigan. Yeah. They're having a wonderful time. If you've seen them on Facebook, I know they've been posting some live stuff on Facebook, so you can check them out there. They're having a good time. I have not heard much from them. He had sent me a message yesterday saying he was praying for me and that he was praying for the church and that all goes well and uh, all is going to go well. Amen. <clears throat> so Proverbs 30. And I'm just going to stick with one verse out of Proverbs 30 here. And it's Proverbs 35. <clears throat> Chapter 30, verse 5. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. You know, last week <clears throat> we learned that the truth, what is truth and, and what is the difference between tr truth and reality. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on truth, but I do want us to understand that God's word proves true. Amen. Always, Amen. in every situation, every word in the Bible proves true. <clears throat> in at least 24 places in the Bible, it specifically says God's word is true. And that's not including, I just looked up God's word is true or God's True. Word is true. I just looked up that, and it says it 24 times. There's other places that, that says the same thing without using that phrase. For example, in heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Yeah. That's Matthew 24, 35. Yeah. 
You know, it's not saying true, but his word is going to last forever. Yeah. You know, what he says, because it's true, it's going to happen. You know, <clears throat> he cannot lie because whatever he speaks comes forth. Yeah. It comes true. Yeah. So therefore, he cannot lie. Psalms 33, 4. <clears throat> For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. You know, upright is, is righteousness. It means truth. It means standing straight. <clears throat> As Christians, we believe God's word. But two things happen at this critical point of knowing every word of God is true. First, we often don't know what God's word says. We don't know what, what, what it says about a situation or about, about what's going on. Okay. So we, we, we don't know what it says. So, so we form our own opinions a lot of times. Uh -oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. That's happened to me. You know, where, where I formed an opinion that did not coincide with the Bible. Yeah. <clears throat> and then we try to fit, it, fit our opinions in the Bible somewhere. And when, and when what we believe doesn't fit with what God says, we get upset. You know, that, that, that's happened to me so many times. I'm like, God, why, why is this happening? You know, this, this shouldn't happen in my life. But... I go to the word, and it's like, well, yeah, it can happen, but I'm not addressing it in the correct manner. <clears throat> Second, we, we pick and choose the parts we believe and trust in. <laughs> trust me, it's not going to be this hard the whole time, so <laughs> it's going to lighten up a little bit. <clears throat> We forget, that little, we forget that little part that says every word and pick the ones that fit our own agenda. And we do this quite often, and we do it more often than what we believe. Um, I'll give you a quick example of things, that, and I do it even so in my life. Uh, let's just pick a scripture. Philippians 4.19, and this is a very, very familiar scripture. It says, in God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Jesus Christ. Well, how many believe that, that that's true? Yeah. Yeah. It says it's true. You know, we said his word proves true. He will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. But let's, let's read the whole verse. You know, let's understand how, how this happens because I can easily quote that all day long. And I can wonder where the riches and where, well, where the needs. Why isn't he fulfilling my needs? Yeah, no, yeah. just because you quote the scripture doesn't mean he's going to fulfill your oh, needs. Oh, okay. okay? Yeah. Let's, let's read it all. <clears throat> Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And this is, this is Paul speaking to the Philippian, uh, Philippians. Yet... It was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourself know what in, in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving, except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, even received from Epaphidus. I think that's right. <laughs> and the gift you sent. A fr I even practiced that. That's the bad thing. <laughs> Epaphroditus. That's what it is. <clears throat> the word of God you sent, a fragrant offering a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ. To our God and Father be forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So, so you see that we just can't pray this prayer without doing anything. You know, this is actually a, a Paul is talking about a missional offering that, that the Philippians, the, um, Philippians were giving to Paul. So therefore, because they gave, and they gave sacrificially, and they gave consistently, and they gave faithfully to Paul as a missionary, they were able to pray this prayer. But Paul says that because you gave sacrificial, 
that God now will supply every need. He will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. So that's very easy. See, do you guys understand what I'm saying? Sometimes we can pull stuff out and not know the true meaning and not know exactly what the, without reading the whole, the whole context of the scripture. You know, so, so it's very easy to do that sometimes. You know, I do that sometimes. You know, I, I, I'll say that, God, you, you said you'd, fu- you'd fulfill all my needs, that you would supply all my needs. But then again, I forget, oh, I, I need to give. You know, I need to give to be able to help with that situation in my life. Yeah. I'll give through it. Amen. There's many other scriptures like that in the, in the Bible where we need to just, do we just need to re, to, to be able to say that the God, God's word is true and it proves true. We must understand what, what God's word says. Let's move into the second part of the scripture, and this is the one I, I really want to focus, focus on the most. But it's important for us to understand that he is our shield to those who take refuge in him, that it starts off first, that scripture says that we need to understand that God's word proves true. It proves true. And then afterwards, it also says that in the next scripture, if you continue reading, we won't go into it, but it says it, it goes into talking about his word again. So I believe it's very important for us to know that he is a shield to those who take refuge in him. To be able to take that refuge in him, we need to understand that the truth and reality, as we learned last week, and we need to believe that his word is true to be able to take refuge in him. Refuge. What does it mean of refuge? Shelter or protection from danger or trouble. A place of shelter, protection, or safety. Anything to which one has recourse for aid, relief, or escape. You know, I, uh, a lot of times as a church, we, we do ourselves a disfavor and we, 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 we tell ourselves that situations don't happen in our lives. That just because we're saved, doesn't mean that we're going to go through, we're not going to go through the troubles and issues. I've heard this so many times, unfortunately, when somebody comes to, to the altar to get saved, that, 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 that a, a minister or a pastor says that all your problems are going to be dealt with. You know, you're not going to have any troubles or, or that's, that's simply not true. It's simply not true. Now, We have a solution to the troubles and the problems that come in our life. That is true. That is true. But it does not take take the troubles and situations away. I'd be lying to you if I said that. Now, I would would, would hope that would be the case, but it's simply not the case. There's situation. There's death. There's... there's, uh, um, catastrophes that happen in our lives on a daily basis. I mean, you turn on the news and it just seems like they make it seem like the world is is falling apart. Mm -hmm. So I'd be doing you guys a disfavor, a disfavor if I'm having trouble not speaking Portuguese. (laughs) 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 Finding those English words in my... I already have a limited number of, of English, so, so <laughs> of English words, so the Portuguese is kind of clouding it every once in a while, but we're going to get through it. We're going to get through it without speaking Portuguese. <clears throat> now, one day I was browsing through my, my, I'll do my daily browse of Facebook. God bless you. Am I? <laughs> All right, now. <laughs> It's not, it's not daily. It's not daily. But I was doing, I was, I was browsing through and, and uh, I, I had seen this, this funny story or not a funny story, but it was interesting, interesting story about something that they had invented a couple years back. And uh, do you guys have a picture of that? The picture of the, the earthquake bed? Okay. <laughs> I was like, what in the world? <laughs> this is what you call an earthquake bed. Okay, and, I, and I, I was reading about it, and what it does is it, on a sign of an 
earthquake or when it starts to feel the earth trend, the, the tremors, it actually drops you down inside it. It actually collapses and, 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 and you're like inside. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? You're kidding me. And, uh, and there's other, I was watching, the, I started researching, I was watching the videos and watching these, and they have so many different types. It was, it was kind of insane. But uh, then I started to think that, that uh, wow, you know, it's not going to stop the earthquake. There's no way to stop an earthquake. And, and you can't even hardly, and they're getting better at it and predicting earthquakes. But I was like, well, this is, this is pretty interesting. I, I think I would have one of these if I was in one of those cities where the buildings weren't, you know, say this is supposed to, a building collapses on this box and you're supposed to be able to live <laughs> inside this box. And uh, I was like, man, did, is, is this not like God? Yeah. You know, okay. is this not like God that, yeah, situation is going to happen. But when the situations come, yeah. he, he, yeah. he drops us inside of him or hides us below, uh, under his wings. Yep. And that we on. take refuge yeah. in him. Come on. And I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty cool. You know, he is there in the situation. I am there with him. Come on. I am there with him. Yeah. You know, and, and when, when signs of trouble or catastrophe happens, that whoop, drops down inside. And inside of this is even cooler because there was food. Yep. There was food in this box. There was water. There was oxygen. There was fire extinguishers. There was tools. <laughs> I thought, this is, this is, this is yeah. <laughs> this is a clubhouse. <laughs> It was very interesting, though, and, and to be able to take that comparison, this is, this is God in my life, yeah. because when situations and troubles come, I have a place. Amen. I know of a place that I can run to. I have a loving Father that I can run to, and He can protect me from anything that happens in my life. Doesn't mean I'm not going to go through it. See, this person's still going to go through that earthquake. They're still going to feel the shakings and, the, and, yeah. and, and God forbid, the building falling on top of them. Yeah. You know, I'm going to go through troubles and situations in my life, but I have someone I can turn to. Amen. Yeah. You know, I don't have to fear the situations. I don't have to fear what the, what the news is saying or what people are saying about this world because I have a father that I can run to and I can depend on. And I can say, because I give, that he will supply all my needs. I don't have to live in fear. I don't have to live in the anxiety. Because I know that he'll be there. But don't go out and buy one of these earthquake beds. They're really expensive. <laughs> yes, I priced them out. Because I thought they were so cool. <laughs> but they didn't have one with two people. So I was like, oh, that wouldn't be cool. I don't think. <laughs> I am married. <laughs> and to make sure that was clear up, my brain just clicked it. Well, I need to clarify that a little bit more. Yes, I'm married. Wonderful wife. <laughs> uh, we all take refuge in something. Whether it's God or something that makes us feel a temporal relief. For some, it may be TV, for some, it may be food. For some, it may be alcohol, drugs, illegal, or even legal drugs. All of these can bring a temporary feeling of relief, but doesn't deal with the issues. Yeah. Right. How can we tell if we turn to someone else other than God or something else or something other than God in a situation? When a problem arises, what is the first thought that comes to your mind? What is the nearest place to buy cake? Or where's the nearest red box? Refuse to take refuge in anything but him. Amen. You know, I find myself, I'm preaching to myself more than I'm, I'm preaching to you guys. I just want to be real. 
that sometimes to get away from this world, I turn to TV. To, to close off, to, to, to kind of isolate myself, I, I just, I turn to TV. It takes my focus, you know, away from everything else in life. And sometimes that becomes a habit. You know, sometimes that even we don't realize it, it starts to be the first thing we turn to instead of turning to God and turning to, to, to Jesus, the Holy Spirit. We don't turn to them when we turn to the TV instead. And I'm talking about myself here. You know, when situations come, I just want to just, I just want to turn life off. You know, and it's so easy to turn life off just to take that remote lane bed and just on, you know. And, you know, and I already have my, DV, my shows DVR'd, you know. I already have my list going on and, you know. And it's so easy. It's so easy to replace that earthquake bed with the TV or with the situation. It's so easy to replace Jesus with a little remote and a button. And there's also something I do. When I get stressed out, I just want to sleep. I just want to just get me away. (laughs) Just sleep. I don't have to do anything. Just sleep. You know, I don't get stressed very often, but usually Juliana always knows when I'm stressed because I just want to go to bed early. I just want to do that. It It just gets me away. It's just one of those things that takes the place. I refuge in, in sleep and TV. Those are the two things that that's me. You know, I've never had to deal with drugs. I've never had to deal with alcohol. I've, I've, I've never done any drugs. I've never smoked a cigarette. I've never drank any alcohol. I've, I've, it's just never has been one of those things for me. I've never had to turn to that. But there's been other things that are just as bad. In my life. See, now, if you're replacing something, if you're replacing God with something, it's just as bad, no matter what it is. It could be legal or illegal. We've got to be careful. So, so I'm going to give us four things that will help us take that refuge and, and, and to, to, to not take refuge in those things, but take refuge in God. First of all, we need to always take comfort in Scripture. You know, there's a, you, gotta, you need to find those scriptures. You know, now, if you don't have a bunch of, of, of scriptures memorized, these are good to have, hold, put in your wallet or your purse, you know, put, to put on the mirror, you know, a place that you're, you're always looking at. And, and get a couple of scriptures that, 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 that make you feel comfortable. You know, and those scriptures could be Romans 8, 31, and it's 31 through 37, but... It, I'm just going to read 31. What then shall we say to these things? Is God, if God is for us, who can be against us? You know, what more comforting scripture can you have? If, if, what can be against me? Amen. If God is for me, there's nothing else that can be against me. There's nothing else that can stand up to the power of Jesus. Amen. So whenever, instead of TV, I can turn to this scripture and say, you know what? There's no problem. There's no situation. There's no catastrophe. There's no enemy that can stand up to God. Amen. Psalms 11.1, 1, In the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, flee like a bird to, to your mountain? You know, I don't need to flee to the mountain. My emotions do not control me. I don't need to flee to the highest place for protection. I need to flee to him to take refuge in him. Psalms 46.1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Very simple verse. God is our refuge and our strength. This is an easy one to remember. This is an easy one to memorize. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So take comfort in Scripture. Don't take comfort in those things of this world. Finding direction, finding direction in Scripture is our second one. Find direction in Scripture. You know, it's always good to have family. It's always good to have that mentor to be able to help guide you and, direct, and, and lead you in life. But it's very important that we take those directions and we take those visions that we have and we find them in the Bible because <clears throat> this Bible that we read wasn't just for yesterday, just wasn't for a thousand years ago. 
You know, it may have been written thousands and thousands of years ago, but it applies to every situation in our life Amen. today yeah. and for our future. It's good to find those scriptures that speak to your situations that you are going through. You know, there's plenty. I mean, Google nowadays, I mean, you just type in anything and you put Bible or scripture next yep. to it. You can find scriptures that go along with the situation that you're going through. You no longer have to call the pastor and say, <laughs> pastor, or, or, or buy special books. I mean, yeah. Google is right there, right, right there. I mean, it's literally there. And it's so easy to be able to type that into Google or whatever you're searching and, and search and find what God says about what's going on in your life at this moment. It's very important. Tim, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. <clears throat> All scripture is breathed out by, by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete equipped for every good work. You know, this is a verse just saying that he is going to, he has training. It's, it's there. He's going to equip you. To, he's not going to, you are not going to have to go through anything in life that he has not equipped you to be able to withstand. He is going to equip you to withstand any attack from the enemy or any situations in your life. But we need to go after it. We need to go after it. It's here. It's in here. I promise you it's in here. But we need to go after it. You know, one thing that we need to notice about the, 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 the scripture in, in Proverbs 30, verse 5, is that it doesn't say that it says to take refuge, meaning it's got to be something that, that we do in life. It's got to be something that I do. I need to take refuge in him. <clears throat> He's not going to jump over to me. I'm going to go to him. You know, there's stuff that I need to do to take refuge in him. Yes, he's a loving father, but I need to trust in him. I need to turn my own will. He, he will not go against our will. I need to say my will, my will is to, to take refuge in you, God. And not to take refuge in that cake, not to take refuge in that TV show, not to take refuge in, in sleep, not to take refuge in whatever you take refuge in, that you have to make that choice. You have to make that choice to take refuge in him. Jeremiah 29, 11 and 12. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You know, he has the plan for our life. You know, and it's plans to prosper us. It's not plans to harm us. You know, only the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But he comes to give life and life abundantly. You know, but we need to find the plan. Once again, it's turn, find, turn to the scriptures to give you direction. So first of all, it's turn to turn for comfort. Open the scriptures up for comfort, and then you open the scriptures up for directions. Make sure the directions that you're hearing, make sure the directions that people are telling you, they align up with God's word. Now, third is prayer. Simply talking and building communion with Him will help you trust in Him. When we need to find refuge. You know, those chaotic situations in your life. So, I don't know about you, but I, I know when, when situations come, it's just your, your brain is going from one, one thing to another. And it's just so chaotic. It's, it's, it's hard to even think straight. We've all been in those situations. We, we have no idea what to do. But if we continually, if, if we build up this habit, and I don't want to jump to the next one, but if we, if we continue in our daily prayers and, and, 
And it doesn't have to be just in the morning or, or, or just in the evening. I'm not talking about that prayer. I'm talking about communion with him. That's all day long. People thinking you're crazy because you're talking to God out loud. You know, it's, I don't care what people think. You know, I know of a father who loves me, and I know of somewhere I can run to and I can take refuge in because I, I, I know his voice when he says, come here, come. I hear his voice, and I recognize his voice, and I know where to run. Yeah. Even though all those other things are trying to cloud what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing and what I'm thinking, I can still hear his voice clearly because I recognize it because I'm in daily communion with him. No matter how loud it gets. Um, When I was going to Brazil on on the plane, I was traveling by plane. Thank God I was traveling by plane. I don't think I really need to tell everyone that, but, but... I had I had one of these these Bose headphones off of credit card points and stuff, so I had these Bose headphones. I and they're the noise canceling ones, and I'm like, ah, these things don't work. You know, they really don't work. So I put them on. You know, I'm like, whoa. It, so I left them on for about an hour, and then uh, Juliana, she was on the other side, about four rows down. I was. She was trying to tell me something, and I don't lip read very well. And are you one of the, what? What? I'm trying to sign, Tori does this to me all the time on the front row. She'll sign something, I'm like, I, I ain't got a clue. You don't have to come over and tell me, or I'm going to have to go to you. This ain't working. <laughs> but uh, so she was trying to tell me. So I took the headphones off. And I'm not, I don't know who's had this experience, but planes are loud. There is a lot going on. And I guess my ears had, had gotten accustomed to that, that silent, yeah. the silence with the headphones. I took them off, and I thought my head was going to explode. I said, I thought the plane was going down. It was that loud. I'm like, the engines are going to blow up here any minute. It could not be any louder. So, but... You know, I, and, I, and I say that because, you know, that happens to us in life where things get so loud and chaotic. And it's like when you take those headphones off and you're like, I, I couldn't even, I had to literally, I had to get focused because it was so loud and I could not concentrate in, on anything, yeah. let alone what she was trying to tell me. But, but, but if we focus, if we take our headphones of God, as, we, as we're praying with him, it cancels out all that noise, yep. and it helps us focus on him. You can still hear a little bit of what's going on, but it makes it so much clearer to be able to hear, no matter what's going on in that plane, you know, whether the kids are crying, and, you, know, you know, those babies that cry, and and. And, and the noise of the engines and, and the clanking and of the preparing the meals and, and all that stuff going on. If you're able to do that and put those headphones on and it, and it kind of cancels that stuff out. Because you walk in a communion with God. You're walking with him daily and you're able to hear his voice. You're able to hear him and he's able to guide you on what you need to do next. You know, in a situation in life... There's always steps we need to take because we can't stay there. Yeah. You know, there's always steps, and sometimes we take the wrong step, and it gets even more chaotic. But then there's steps when we hear God say, no, God, go this way. And the path lightens up and brightens up for us. So simply prayer is talking and building communion with him. It doesn't have to be this laborious thing. It shouldn't be laborious to talk to a friend yeah. or a father. It should be something simple and easy to do. You know, he, he may bring correction every once in a while, but it's for our own good. And our fourth is consistency. And this, I know, this hits me, me a lot. Consistency. Habits are built from cons- consistently turning to something to fulfill a need that we have. 
You know, habits are built, and I'm not going to go to all the stuff because I don't know it completely, but there's something that builds endorphins in our brain when we, when we build habits up or something that fulfills something in our life. Our brain releases chemical, and it brings a, a satisfying feeling or uh, it just it feels a, a really good feeling to us, and, and that's how habits are, are built a lot of times. And when we consistently turn from a situation and turn to something else other than God, it forms that habit. You know, that's how a lot of times we get stuck on, on, on just things that aren't healthy in our life. Yeah. Whether it's eating, or whether it's, you know, the other alcohol or drugs or whatever the situation is. You know, a lot of times it's because it's fulfilling a, a comfort in our lives and it's something that we've done so many times in a row, you know, and, and it becomes to a situation where situations don't even need to come up in your life. And you, you need that comfort because you've consistently practiced something in your life, yeah. which build a habit, you know, and, and we teach in, in our, our growth track is that there's good habits and there's bad habits. <clears throat> it's very important that we build those good habits in our life. You know, there can be good habits, you know, good habits of, of prayer, good habits of reading our Bible, a good habit of just being nice, you know, to people. These are all habits that we build. If I have a habit of, of, of every time somebody talks to me, I respond in an ugly manner, you know, it's, that's a habit that I can, that I can build. If, if every time my wife asks me to do something, I, I do the, oh, you know, that is a habit in my life that I need to watch and I need to take care of. Good thing she's in children's church. Yeah, come on. But if it's something that we do consistently, we'll, we'll build a habit out of it. See, if we, if we turn to him continually, if we can always turn to him, and if we do it in signs of trouble, it will become a, a habit for us. See, if we always turn to him, and we make that a practice in our lives, we're building a good habit in our life, and we're able to take refuge in him. Because the faster we can take refuge in him, the much easier it's going to be in our lives. So if I build that habit, so if I consistently practice, it takes practice. You know, when, when I played baseball, you know, we, we took so many reps and, and, I, and I couldn't understand my batting coach, you know, why so many, why did I have to do, so, do something so many times? Why did I have to swing in a way so many times? You know, why I had to work on the outside? Because he knew that, when a pitch came to me, I wouldn't have to think anymore right. on how to swing the bat. Amen. You know, he knew that when there was an outside pitch, I wouldn't have to think, oh, I need to, you know, swing a different way on that outside pitch because I had practiced it so many times that it just came automatic or it became a habit for me to be able to swing in the right way. It's the same way and the same way in football, the way we tackle. You know, I was wondering why we had to do so many tackling drills, why we had to get our head on the side and our head up, you know, because when time came, when the situation came, when there's somebody running at you full speed and you're running at them full speed, that you don't have to think on how to tackle someone. You automatically know you've been practiced. You've built that good habit up and you're able to make that tackle the same way with finding refuge in God. That you don't have to think anymore, where do I need to run to? Where do I need to go? My first thing is I take refuge in God. And then I can take, make those phone calls. Then I can make those phone calls and say, hey, grow group leader or your friend or your, your pastor. And you can say, hey, I'm going through this. I'm in refuge already. I'm, I'm under God's protection, but where do I go to next? You know, the Bible says this, 
Is, is, this what, is this what you're hearing from God for me? So it helps us get out of the catastrophes in our life, out of the situations. And it doesn't even, I'm, I'm using the word catastrophe, but it doesn't even have to be a catastrophe. It could be the simple things in life. You know, it, it could be... It could be a little car wreck, and you know you didn't get hurt, but it's you got a bump in your car. You know how are you going to pay for that? It could be a bill in life. You know uh, how am I going to deal with that, Lord? You know I don't need to turn to something to be able to pay my bill. I can take refuge in God, and we can work on it with Him. We can work on the situations in our life with Him. As the worship team comes forward, I just, I want us to give us, give us an opportunity to be able to say, God, I'm sorry that, that I've turned to something else other than you for refuge. Or if those that are in here may, may say, I don't even know God. You know, I run in this direction, I run in this direction, then I run in this direction. I just, I don't see a way out. I, I don't feel protected. When situations come, I just, I just feel depressed and overwhelmed. Because these are all things that that when we take refuge in God, that he protects us from. Depression, anxiety, feeling overwhelmed. We must understand that, that he is our refuge. And as Tori spoke on last week, just on uh, putting Jesus as the reality in our life. He is the truth and he is our reality.